looked it up on YouTube. These two have played before, and it was Marth, Luigi, and so yeah. Uh, you know what? While we're sitting here getting in game one, I'm gonna fast forward and tell you what who won the set. Uh, that being said, we've got an open for Takeshi to start the set. Yeah. You know what? Um, I hate bringing up in Luigi sets. Cause you know how people say he's like the rook of melee because he moves back and forth. I hate I hate when people say that. But oh, that's funny. it's notable this time because Takeshi is wearing a shirt with a knight on it. And so it's a real battle of rook versus knight. And if you know anything about chess, rooks are worth more than knights. Therefore, um, the actual matchup advantage goes to uh, C bass or the C base. I'm gonna go with Seabass. Okay. Seabass won this set. Okay. Four months ago. That's because he's a rook. And not Three zero. Yeah. So I just did my stats on my block. How about that? <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you. With no advance notice. We call that cramming before the stuff. Da -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> and coming down with an aerial, I mean, we got completely uh, high percent to start. Um, I guess I should talk about the matchup or something. <laughs> um, oh. oh no! So Luigi has to move across the ground very quickly. Uh, Marth can take advantage of this by putting moves in places Luigi wants to go to. Like that fair you're seeing a lot, and like that down tilt. That's basically the matchup from Marth's point of view. Yeah. Um, you don't have to overcomplicate it by doing much else. Now the punish game is its own thing, right? The edge guarding is its own thing. Yep. Um, but in neutral, that's what you're looking for. You just want to wall out Luigi slow and steady. Yep, it's not necessarily runs the race. 212% was definitely a little high, but again, we still end up taking the stock, and Takeshi keeps it competitive. Yeah, I mean, it was a long sequence, and that's the way that it goes. And you know, there's this thing that happens to Marth players against floaties. Like, they don't like playing against Luigi or Peach, and they're like, I just have to keep hitting them, and it's so draining. But then I always say to them, how do you think it feels when you keep getting hit as Luigi? <laughs> you just keep getting swatted away, and there's just nothing you can really do, because especially when you're in the air, it sucks to be Luigi in the air. It is horrible. Um, and you got your neutral end. People play around that and beat it. It's kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, we love a good DP. That move makes me laugh because it's just like you forget it's there and then you're like, wait, is that an angle? And then you watch it happen and you giggle and then you move on. Uh, Budget rest. One thing I've noticed so far about Seabass, not a panicker. There was a spot where Seabass landed on a platform and definitely could have been forward smash. Uh, but instead of spot dodging, which is what Takeshi was waiting for, uh, just like got off the plat and was fine. That tech was Jeez. phenomenal! Yeah. There's like seven back airs. What is this, Jimmy Puff? That is some SDI on that, right? Yeah. It has to be. It has to be. Yeah, yeah gets in on whiff. Go down. Yup, drop down with the back air, and that is a three stock to one lead, of course, we're at 130%. So uh, if Mark Reitus doesn't kick in, Takeshi should be able to tie this up uh, to only one stock to have since we guessed on the tie up. But keep it fair. Yep, yep. And, awesome. in, and in this type of matchup, you do not want to take more damage because Luigi is kind of crouch cancelable, some of his moves, right? right. And so staying, <coughs> you know, uh, Below 40 percent ish <laughs> is a big milestone in the matchup. Yeah, crouch canceling against just a lot of mid tiers in general just ends up being the move uh, just in the most scenarios because that's kind of one of the big things that like, separates a lot of the characters. Just having too many, not enough options, uh, but especially because of grounded characters such as Luigi, you're hitting all of your stuff on the ground, people can CC it. That doesn't seem to matter because Seabash just took game one and played two stuff. I got a question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Why do you think Luigi's moves hit so hard? They hurt. Because he has rocks in his shoes. What about when he does the chop? Rocks in his gloves. Mm. Luigi is full of rocks. Luigi because is full of rocks. Rock sounds like a rook. Yup. Uh huh. And now we're on FD, which. I don't even know. It's a I don't hate this. No, it's yeah, it's tough for Luigi for a couple of reasons. So first off, you don't have the plat. Sometimes Luigi can alter his uh, uh, attack angle a little bit by being able to wave land off of a platform. That's not possible here, of course. And then also, the jungle is nasty because Luigi actually has the worst air drift in the game, right? Yeah. He can only basically come straight down, and he's good at putting out moves on his way. The Marth can wait under and then either up air or faint up air and then going for an up tilt or an up smash or something. Uh, so up throw actually, like, for Marth, a good punish even though you don't truly get to connect it from it very often. Mm, indeed. And, and I think also, at, in, in the same breath, you could say, like, Final Destination, just like traditionally as a stage, is meant to dumb down a matchup. It's meant yeah. to completely limit someone's options and make it very much uh, face value. <laughs> I, 
you on this fire friend. And, and as Marth Ray, um, you're looking to play a simple game anyway, so it's not really like you're losing your crucial options, right. but Luigi is losing some crucial options. So Luigi's got to think, and when you dump down the matchup, and you just go character to character, raw, Marth's going to take it. Yeah, yeah, in theory. In theory, of course. Uh, execution <laughs> is like 99% of this game. Uh, but we do have, because you can just run off four times. You lose. That is a nice edge guard. Yeah, nice. Coming off, yeah. You can punish uh, the green missile that's a side B. You can punish that lag. Um, that time was a little bit late, but able to catch the fireball. And you know, anything else Luigi does other he's just hanging there. He either has to do it again, or like, I mean, he doesn't have his jump left, right? I guess all he can do is green missile again. Right. So it was kind of a checkmate scenario. We're going back to trust me. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to keep parallel, which is fine by me. Uh, but it's also a thing where, like, you know, especially if the Luigi player is really good, you can kind of, like, you hit your side beat, your green missile, and you make it onto the platform, and you just cancel it, and then you're fine. And now, because you're on FD, you can't do that. Or at least you could be hard to. Yes, yes. I was just noticing how even with Luigi's fast wave dash speed, it's sometimes difficult for him to set up Marth Killer. Yeah. He wasn't able to get and that edge guard was really important. Because now like it could go to a two stock game. This could very easily Oh, a little greedy, my friend Takeshi, but it's fine. You're fine. You still have 150%. Hopefully Mark doesn't screw you over and that's good. Oh, he's back! Wow! wow. Still save the jump till the end. Away. Nice. That is my fault, Sebas. So You're a god. Didn't get any extra damage, though, so a full stock lead for Takeshi. Yeah, full stock lead on the counter pick. Feeling good. Okay. Oh, so, this looks good. Oh, I had a down air. That might be the end of it. Able to set up the Marth Killer this time. Snags the ledge. Doesn't hold on to it. And Takeshi able to make it back. And can't true punish. Smart from Seabass not to just immediately engage. That would get you swatted. Indeed. Now, <laughs> that's that's the thing. That's the thing. Luigi can do that too, because like yeah. the invincibility on the up smash. If you run into it, you're actually just gonna lose every single time. So you have to be very careful how you treat that. You just have to kind of stay away from it. Yeah. It's quite strong, and he can like slide around with it. It's kind of uh, what Dacus e Dacus ish ish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dacus. In effect. Yeah. We're we're now in a tie game, which is just so. Impressive from Seabass, just opening up a stock so hard. Really just came out swinging and said, oh, no, nope, I'm not going down. That, I mean, that is one of those things. This is one of those matchups where Marth, Marth has the advantage the whole time, but Luigi has is more likely to swing things hard to his favor, right? So it's like Marth should be steadily grinding down Luigi and constantly having the lead. Until Luigi gets one of those big openings that just changes everything. And that's how Luigi keeps pace in this matchup. There we go. I mean, this could very well go to a game three. It, it's poising itself to be so with Seabass's counter pick advantage. Right. Real strong, but not strong enough to get the KO this time. Yeah, it's another like 10-15% that certainly would have done it, but um, Takeshi now has opportunities to take a little bit more percent before going down the last time scenario. Okay, what do you think about this buff? Luigi's fireball goes twice as far. Whoa. It's not crazy, right? Why is it? It's, it's pretty slow. It's not, it's hardly out. It just disappears. I'm good without Luigi buffs. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I'll keep my game the way it is. Uh, yeah, we're last stock now. I mean, 33% is all that separates the two. If Luigi gets a grab down throw down here, that's kind of that's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, once again, Takeshi sticking with the game plan uh, for the most part, going for all these pokes, a little bit of prodding. Yeah, and Luigi's now stuck in a jungle scenario. There's the down B, the Cyclone, to try and you know, get that extra recovery when inevitably the Seabass will go off stage at some point in the stock. Yeah, I mean, the reason you pick FD is to get juggles that hopefully go longer than that, though, right? And I mean, it might make the difference. Seabass has the ledge. Able to get back, the catch just barely snags. Oh, and just lets a forward smash rip. I do respect that, but a second one is definitely really greedy. A third one, I guess it's working. Swang, Takeshi! <laughs> Swing that sword, bring it to a game three, take control of your own destiny. That's a second one, I don't think... Did Seabass forget that the... Or he like already had a story. Yeah, already had a story. I don't know, it's not, I guess, that bad of a move. Ooh, that would have been crazy clutch if that connected. Oh no, we overextended. Okay, yeah, he's just trying to zone, using that Nair. He's been working in the Nair since the end of the last game. And 
Kesha Sin. At 90%, this down throw is going to turn into an up smash, and that's going to steal the game. Yeah, it's good conversion. Oh, man, Seabass with a 2 0. I mean, Takeshi looked pretty good, had the game plan. Uh, you know, the, the basic game plan that you expect that usually does well. And they just like, needed to be slightly sharper, I guess, still. And I think that some of those like juggle scenarios could have gone a little better. Maybe that's the difference maker because it was really close both games. Uh, yeah, I think the other thing, like especially in that last game, which is going to come up in a in a, in a moment here, uh, in that last stock scenario, I was thinking. About